Hello, welcome everyone to Basic Binges, part of Nom Talk Network. We're here. It's the season finale. Oh my god, I almost said series finale. That would have been atrocious, and I'm so glad that it's not. Uh, we still get one more whole season of Stranger Things, and I'm so excited for it. I know that it's not just us that are super excited. I think all of y'all. Hey, we've got y'all already in the chat. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Amy Cassandra Martinez, and I'm joined by some amazing, fantastic, totally rad, that's 80s, right? Um, guests, yeah, okay, with us today. But before we get into that, on the show, we review popular shows that are out now while eating and drinking our favorite binge-worthy drinks and snacks. I am once again winging it and not drinking anything or eating anything. I forgot. I, I'm not going to lie. I was focused on my makeup. Okay, there. I said it. But yes, let's get started with our wonderful guest today. Eric, you have something that you're drinking. Tell us. Please. I do. I went totally back into the 80s and got a wine cooler. I haven't had one of these since I was 21. Like, it's an interesting taste, but it's a new take because it's Jack Daniels, which they weren't creating wine coolers in the 80s. So. Ooh. Ooh, everyone in the chat, if, if you like wine coolers or Jack Daniels or anything like that, let us know. Um, Johnny, let's go to you. Can you see us with those shades? Uh, it's I'm too cool. No, I'm not. Uh, but yeah, hey guys, Johnny back. Uh, I have the good old water and uh, I brought the whole Brita pitcher, by the way. <laughs> We're getting into it. And then I brought my favorite treat. Reese's. Ooh. Oh, Reese's peanut butter cups. Nice, nice. Real healthy. Oh, hey, no calories. Uh, count. Calories don't count. There we go. During the making of this after show. Yeah. And joining us, a very, very special guest, Mary Ann Butler. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Oh, hi. Thanks for having me. I'm excited cool. to be here. <laughs> are you eating or drinking anything? Or are you winging it like me? <laughs> I, I have many things because I was going with the whole, you know, Eddie, 80s rocker motif. So I had to had to grab some whiskey, some Jameson. Oh, nice. And from my own personal store, a tab. Yeah. Tab. Wait, can you just, for people that aren't as familiar with tab? flavors um what is that what is what does that taste like oh god uh so tab was a very popular diet soda beverage in the 80s and it tastes like if you put aspartame and saccharin in a diet coke shook it up left it in the sun for three weeks and then made someone drink it it is the most god-awful thing don't drink it it's not worth it just don't get the it. bottles put it on a shelf, get the cans, put those on a shelf. That's it. Just do that. Okay. See, words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and for the future, if you hear me saying Mav, that is Mary Ann Butler. Um, That's me. So we're all on the same page. Okay. We've got a lot of people in the chat joining us for the season finale. Hey, everyone. The Manabites. I think I said that right. How are you? Sprinkles, what's up? I know you. I still have half an hour to go to the, oh my God, final episode. Ah! Oh my gosh. Well, hey, by the time you're done, we will still be here. So that's great. Thank you so much for keeping us open. And I'm glad that like right after you're done, you're going to be here, right here. Um, <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Crystal, love everyone's looks. Um, water. People like water. Crystal likes water. I like water. See? We like water. Um, yes. Okay. Q, what's up? Yes. Happy birthday to our producer, Stephanie. Everyone, can we get some birthday shout outs? You can go ahead and, I guess, at or like mention Nom Talk Network right there. Awesome. Oh, Q Ball says, I'm a Bud Light draft guy. Not familiar, but I'm I'm pumped for you. Okay. I'm you know, Bud Light. I was either solid. Or Bud Light. Yeah. Solid classic choice. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Um, okay, y'all, there's so much that we have to talk about. We're going to do the greatest hits, the highlights. Greatest hits. I feel like you, you would like that because music. Get it? Um, greatest mm -hmm. hits. So please, I want us all to geek out because no rules apply anymore. We're going to talk about everything related to the last episode of season four of Stranger Things, as well as just any thoughts that just pop up, 
into our heads. If we try to make connections to something, let's go ahead and throw it out there because you never know. It might come true and we might just be guessing the next season. And then the Duffer brothers can be like, oh my God, how'd you know? And we'll just be like, well, we're great fans. So I want the, I want of, the writing credit. Yes. I want the writing credit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I want the writing credit for this series. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of great fans, y'all, we have to kick it off with Joyce. And Hopper, we got the moment. Heck yes, we got the kiss. I want each and every one of y'all, including in the chat, word vomit. Everything that you were feeling, take us back to you watching that. We weren't able to watch it all together, but I want to experience it with you now. Mav, let's kick it off with you. Okay, the first thing I have to say is the kiss was not scripted. If you did not know this, there were three big moments in this finale that were not originally scripted. And I will get to each one of them as they pop up. But th that moment, the kiss, the kiss was not scripted. Winona and David put it in the day of. And it just, it like, it makes me have tingles and feel all the warm and fuzzies that they, they knew that this moment was kind of pivotal for these characters and the audience too, because how fulfilling was that after all this time, finally, finally, just kind of like one of those great payoff moments for me personally. Yeah, very rewarding for sure. Maddie, Maddie and I have this thing where it doesn't matter what, if it's romantic or this or that, anytime a character is like this close to another character in a show or anything, like we're always hurt, we chant kiss, 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 and they do more. <laughs> so. Does everybody do that? <laughs> well, my only thing about it is they finally kissed and they were going further, but it again got chopped off with the freaking phone. Like, I was just like, you guys want it so bad. And just they're like, oh, really? The phone now? It, it was it, it was a little bitter, bittersweet moment for me for that one. <laughs> we got something. So thank you so much, Winona. And David, we're on a first name basis now. Uh, <laughs> I am the one who nerds. Thank you so much for being here, greetings one and all. Yeah, look, I'm not gonna lie. I'm just so excited that we got to talk about that first because like that's that's one of the first things that happened, I wanna say in the finale. Uh, let's just say it does. Okay, next thing that we desperately need to talk about. Um, I wanna know how you felt and if you, if you teared up, totally cool. Um, and if, you felt like that's exactly what needed to happen at that time. Jonathan and Will's conversation, basically you can come to me, chat. Like you can chat with me, you can count on me. Um, yeah, at the Surfer Boy Pizza. Yes, uh, Eric, go ahead, go ahead. Jonathan finally stepped up to being the brother he used to be and has finally stepped up and been like, you're okay. There's bigger things than what we're dealing with actually right now, but you can talk to me. And that's what um, a lot of people in the LGBTQ want to hear. So it was just so great to see him and just that loving situation. And I was like, finally, we're getting some resolution and some joy for Will. Because like I said before, he's on the back burner. And uh, just to have him get that moment was just so wonderful for me to have. Yeah. Didn't cry, but almost, almost heard up. <laughs> yeah, definitely like, oh. Yeah. Yes, a little redemption for Will. No, Johnny. Yes, I, I've got to say, as as someone who's uh, just uh, just an advocate, uh, you know, just a uh, just a open ear. Uh, I hope that someday, if there's ever anybody who needs me like that, I could step up like that. Like I, you know, I have the I have this thing that like someday I'll be a dad, and I want to have that thing where I'm just like, I don't have, I maybe not have like this exact wording, like, cause life is not a movie, but I just want my kids or my nieces, my nephews, anybody or wherever they identify. I just want to be able to be like, Hey, I have this thing on the table. You can pick this up and hit me up anytime. Like that's, you know, I, I got teary cause I hope that someday I could be there for someone like that. Yeah. 
I felt in a way like maybe Jonathan was relieved because maybe all this time he's been worried about Will still having something from the upside down be a part of who he is and finding out that that's not what it has been for him. I feel like maybe he was a little relieved. And also he's like, oh, this is great. I can support my brother. He is pouring his heart out here and I definitely need to be there for him because who else will be? Yeah, I know because Mike is busy and Mike is oblivious. Let's be honest. Mike is a terrible friend and he's <laughs> Mike is, oblivious. Mike, Mike is not the Mike that we got to know in these previous <laughs> seasons. I, I agree with that. He's turned into like the teenage jackass type of regular. I hate to say regular teenage boy because that's such a terrible stereotype, but I feel like that's what they were doing with his character, just making him kind of a jerk to everybody. As a as a as someone who's been a a, a cis hetero <laughs> idiot in high school, like it's it's the only way out is through, you know. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> even if even if we're idiots, then like it's it won't last forever, you know. So I mean, and not only that, high school kids just went to the it's Seven Eleven, so we would just went to go get the Seven Eleven Slurpee today. Uh, and yeah. me oh, me and me and the lady, we were just walking. And we just felt so old because there were some teenagers just walking their dog, being loud and just like not caring about social distancing and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, they're kids. They they just they're 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 going to figure it out later. Like, man, get off my lawn is what I sound like. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The Manabites in the chat says, for me, Will has been the most tragic Mm -hmm. character of that show through the entire run. I was so grateful for that scene. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, we kicked it off with season one, and yikes, that was a lot. Um, And we'll get into where Will is by the end of this season. But yeah, definitely a lot. Um, We talked about the the location already, Surfer Boy Pizza. So let's get into one of our favorite characters, Argyle. (laughs) Okay, I love that moment where they're like, okay, we need uh, a lot of salt. And he says, is 600 pounds of salt enough? 600 pounds? 600 pounds. My gosh. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, Argyle is basically making a pizza. It's like the Food Network show, Food Network channel there. Um, and it is officially canon. L likes pineapple pizza. It's- yes. <laughs> yes. So move uh-huh. over, Egos. It's pineapple pizza time. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to know y'all's thoughts just about Argyle, I guess, because that's this might be the only time we do touch on Argyle, um, because everything else we're going to focus on other stuff that happens. So entire run of Argyle, Argyle making pizza, L liking pizza, thoughts about that. We'll start with you, Johnny. It's just a great montage. I love the way that it I mean, in screenwriting, storytelling, blah, 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 you do this thing where it's like so much is happening. Oh, you know, Eddie and this and that. And what's happening in this corner? What's happening in this corner? Hey, everybody, let's stop. Let's take a second. Enjoy Slice. And I love the fact that they were just like, I remember I remember watching it weeks ago and just going, I see really just making a fucking pizza during all this chaos. And then now, like, rewatching it for this, I'm like, hell yeah, he is. Hell yeah. A little fuel before the fight. Yeah, yeah. It's what he's comfortable doing. Like, we've kind of established that. That's what he's really knowledgeable about, other than getting high. Uh, (laughs) I think if they they continued making him the stoner comic relief, it would have been really annoying. So I'm glad that they gave him a moment like that, where he's more than just the comic 80s relief stoner kid. Like, that, that really made him a better character for me was the pizza making scene oh yeah yeah. i really enjoyed the fact that he just was like so chill about it like my little Mm -hmm. super powered friend is gonna go do some badass shit let's go like i know a place let's go i got connections and then also like driving that whole van around i do have to say though which i mentioned to you guys earlier the number on the pizza van Mm -hmm. yep you was it? it the number on the pizza van if you call it it works and it's our guy picks up and like gives a whole pizza order and then hangs up on you. It's great. It's fantastic. But that's who that, and that just gave me a little bit more of our guys. Like that's totally who he is. Chill, like 
nothing bad in his character at all. Just like, okay, that happened. Let's go. <laughs> you know, okay, we'll get into what we hope for in the future, maybe questions unanswered and stuff like that. But I'm the one who nerds. Yeah, I mean, makes a great point. Those last two episodes, Argyle really pulls his weight. He noticed the tire tracks that led to L, and yes, he knew he about the salt. Mm-hmm. Good points. Yeah, bro is on another plane for sure. Uh, oh, 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 okay. I'm the one who nerds. Also says I'd actually argue he pulled his weight more than Jonathan. Agree or disagree? Agreed. No, I would totally agree with that. Oh. Jonathan was like non-existent this entire season. So I, I absolutely agree with that. Only thing Jonathan did was pull that joint out of his pocket. That is it. Oh, and have the conversation with Will finally. <laughs> Those yeah. two things. Yeah. Yeah. But like, does that make up for the rest of the season? Just being kind of blank the entire time? No, I mean, not at all. Not one bit. <laughs> there's so many people. So many people to keep track of. I mean, I mean, we as viewers sit and consume this media. I'm just imagining Duffers and all the, st- and all the staff and all the writers having to like plate spin everything and then keeping it going. And then like, and then there's Jonathan, a plate, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll get into this later, but the Duffer brothers, I, I'm making it sound like I actually spoke with them. No, I watched an after show on Netflix Geek on YouTube, which y'all are also welcome to watch after this one, of course. It runs about an hour and they interview Pretty, uh, not everyone, but a lot of people. And I just watched the volume two one and the Duffer brothers do say, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of people, so they don't think they'll be adding anyone next season. So I'm like, okay, if you're not adding anyone, then what are you going to do with the people that are already there? Obviously we're not going to know yet now, but someone that was no, <laughs> no, uh, someone that I think was also like, eh, to some people was Mike. Mike's character development was um, lacking, some would say, I would say. Um, But we did get a moment. And I want to know if it hit you, if you felt it, if it resonated, if you were moved by it. The whole speech to Elle. And we are going to be jumping around. This is um, a warning for y'all. We're going to be focusing on groups of people and kind of what happens with them. So, yes, Mike's speech to Elle when everything's happening in the future with, like, Ah, Max and everything, but he's like, I love you. We need you. La, la, la. Did it hit right here? Or was it like, yeah, we need you. it did not for me. And I, I don't like to say that because I am a huge fan of Finn Wolfhard. I think he is a tremendous young actor and not to get off subject, but he was my number one pick to play young Paul Atreides in Dune. Like he's who I wanted because he would have been so perfect. And I like him more than I like Chalamet, especially because he's the right age. Sorry. Uh, but There's a lot of people who like people more than Chalamet. I just have ah, He's too old. <laughs> he's too old. Rebecca Ferguson could not be his mother. Sorry. Anyhow, Finn Wolfhard is really good. He has shown us his chops throughout the rest of the series, but in this season, he is just phoning it in for me. And I don't know if that's just how he was written. I don't know if that's how he was directed. I don't know if he was just checked out, but it it didn't work for me at all. He's yeah, no, busting I, ghosts. What? No, I definitely agree with you on that one. It was just this character development of Mike was lackluster to say the least they made him a shitty person who he wasn't that in the previous season every other season he's been so caring and so attentive and like uh definitely towards Al but to his the rest of his friends as well but it just was then everything that Will tells him he was that he was the heart and where was that in this season and I get it that's the character journey we have to have him reminded that he is this thing and he has to step back up into that role but at the same time it's like there was nothing not even a hint of who that character used to be well he would have always done that for Elle because he's always been there for her and been like this is why I love you I can't say it but I love you I'm going to be there for you I just feel like maybe since it did take so long for them to film this last season that he had so many other projects going on that he wasn't as attentive to this as he was with his other things I would say that like I would say like the speech itself was good i mean because in the moment like for me personally it's like i always feel like oh you know 
my fiance is on this pedestal and I'm lucky to be around her. any of this stuff, you know, like I'm blessed and I'm, and I, and she is, you know, whatever. And the way he articulates like how bland he feels, even without superpowers or even like the, it captured that feeling really well, but coming out of Finn Wolfhard's, you know, gullet, I'm like, yeah, okay. They're doing it. He's, you know, great was- text though. Great writer. Great writing, but it's just what how they built up that character throughout the season. None of us were going to take it how they it be, maybe. It just, mm-hmm. okay, he said it to get her through it. We knew he had to say something, but eh, take it or leave it. Yeah, I mean, Johnny, you said this. It was just, there's a lot of plates, and it felt like maybe Mike was just a little bit on the back burner. Sprinkle says, Mike was definitely like, I am here too. Hello. <laughs> so yes, you know who actually captured our hearts almost instantaneously. We're going to go ahead and just dive into this. Um, it was Eddie. Oh, God. Hey. Joe Quinn. Okay. So yes. Um, first of all, I still, if y'all haven't seen any interviews with Joe Quinn with his natural hair and like his natural haircut, it's so trippy to see. Cause I feel like his face, his head, his whole like vibe is so perfect for the eighties. And I'm like, wow, you should just totally just have that wig all, all the time. But yes, um, we are going to talk about a few moments. So everyone get ready with your wonderful thoughts and feelings about the concert that we were, you know, so, I don't know, blessed to be like in the presence of, I would say. Um, But yes, so earlier when they're trying to get everything situated, Eddie says, look at us, we are not heroes. When Steve is saying, you know, hey, you and Dustin don't try to be heroes. Okay, just like you're trying to get all the demo bats to just come over here so they can do this thing, blah, blah, blah. And that's when Eddie says that. And I don't know about y'all, but when any one of my favorite characters says or does anything remotely like touching, that's like a little too far. I'm like, oh no, you're going to die. No, you're no longer safe. And that was one of the first moments where I was like, freaking Duffer Brothers. And then of course we get the most memorable concert in the history of the world. Yeah, for sure. So um, before we get into that, Metallica, commented and did something on TikTok. So I know one of y'all mentioned it before that they actually do edit. Yes, Q-Ball says, I can't even get over Metallica jamming with Eddie on Master of Puppets on TikTok. I didn't see that, but I know that someone commented on Metallica's, maybe it might've been that. And they were like, oh, sorry for all these people that are just like fake fans because they're just joining you now. And Metallica answered in a, like, such a beautiful way, basically saying, like, we're just excited to have more people listen to our music, basically, which is so great. And that's what it's all about. So everyone in the chat, I want to hear your thoughts about the most memorable concert in the history of the world. Um, and if you have some favorite metal bands, what are they? Favorite metal songs? This is the time to go nuts in the chat about anything and everything metal and just 80s music. So let's go ahead and talk about the most memorable concert in the history of the world. Did you love it? Do you want a guitar now? Do you want to learn how to play electric guitar? Do you want to have a metal concert? Eric, yay, nay? Uh, Love the concert. Best moment for Eddie. Like just ripping on top of a trailer in the upside down with the bats coming at him. Just like perfect. Was who he was throughout this kind of season. Or the not kind of season, this season. Like just let's do it. Kind of scared, but we're gonna do it. Like it brought me back to that first D D thing. Um, great song choice, have to say that. Like Master of Puppets, come on, Metallica, Bats, Metal, love it. Um, I try to learn the guitar. I am not good at it, so that is not something I will be doing. <laughs> but uh, for him, I actually saw his rehearsal um, footage when he was learning that, and he was as in it when he was on that top of that trailer as he when he was in rehearsal which was fantastic just the him learning the actual chords and everything like that to look so good i'm impressed by him plus it's eddie and i love eddie yeah yeah man i hate metallica 
I have always hated Metallica. I am a huge metal fan. I am a musician. I am a sound engineer. I have grown up at concerts literally since I was six months old. My dad's a sound engineer. So that's how I got into all of it. I hate Metallica. Uh, I wish it would have been any other band in the world because- Who, who would you have chosen and what song? Uh, just to fuck with Metallica, I would have picked Megadeth. Oh. Just to fuck with them, because why not? Uh, my my favorite band of that ilk is more progressive rock, prog rock. Uh, Dream Theater is my band, but I, I total I understand why they picked it. I'm not faulting the song choice. I just personally hate Metallica. <laughs> the members are not who you think they are uh, that's a whole oh other gosh. story but i'm not gonna fault any of the fans who were excited for that moment it worked in the in the scene uh i love eddie i don't think it was his best moment his best moment comes afterwards but it was you know it was a scene that everybody really responded to so it got done what they wanted it to do yeah johnny well, I'd say the sound engineer or the sa- the person who picks the um, who does the soundtrack. Um, my film brain is the music supervisor. There you go. My film brain was not working. Um, they're doing their job very well. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, the 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 metalness of it all it 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 make it gets your blood boiling. Like when you hear percussion, like music, sounds, vibrations, they do stuff to your body and like this and and they did it well with this but when i was a kid uh metallica was for bad kids metallica when i saw those when i saw it's uh, like like uh skulls on t-shirts at school and stuff i was like oh no that kid's trouble that kid's no weed you know blah 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 and uh and in, in so much so that because i was raised that way when i first met eddie i was just like is he the new billy is he gonna get corrupted like my whole brain was just like, he's a bad kid, you know, and all this other stuff. But as he becomes this victim and as he's portrayed as things go on, you, you grow with him, you know, um, because, you know, selling drugs to this cheerleader, all that kind of stuff. I grew up not like, I didn't grow up with like weed being legal or weed being like chill in California. Like I grew up going like, Oh, bad, oh no. But Metallica was for the bad kids when I was a kid. Um, when you're saying like picking an extra song, uh, my number one song, like to get me fucking pumped for that shit would be um, Motorhead's Ace of Spades. That would have been such a better choice. Sorry. Oh, I'm just so mad. No, 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 no. You know, like my favorite thing about that is that I found that because, you know, I grew up, oh, medals for bad kids, worshiping the devil. Like, I would have legit been one of those kids at the rally who's just like, uh, maybe, uh, a cult, uh, you know what I mean? Like, that that's who I would have actually been if I were any character in this. If I were any member of the town, it'd be a kid who's, like, in probably Erica's class who has a crush on Erica. And it's just like, uh, 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 uh I don't know. But I found Motorhead in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, and I, mm, I loved it. Like, it, ever since then, I was just like, yeah, Ace of Spades is... No, that's a solid choice. I like that it. That is a solid choice, yes. Um, I do have to say one more thing about Eddie before we move on a little bit. Oh, I could talk just about Eddie. <laughs> I have to say, his character, even though it was just this season that we've seen him, he, he was the most, like, heartfelt one, because... Everything that he thought, which I feel like we would have, was just out there. Just like, what is that? Like, but also so very caring. He had the most heart and he was genuine to himself and to everybody he was around. That beautiful moment he had with Chrissy just kind of set everything up for me as to who this character was. And I loved that he got that moment. And the the moment I was going to talk about is the second of three. Yes, I was going to bring this up too. (laughs) Unscripted moments in the finale. As we know, Eddie passes. He succumbs to his injuries from the devil bats. And Dustin is cradling him in his lap. And Eddie says to him, I love you, man. And that was ad-libbed. That was added. 
And I love that so much because he understood his character. He understood what needed to happen and be said in that moment to kind of not save Dustin, but kind of save Dustin. Cause this is the second time that Dustin's been in this situation and he clearly loved Eddie in a certain way. And it was a beautiful moment and I love it. I mean, we'll also, get... oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to talk about it all. We'll get into the biggest tearjerker moments coming soon. So get your tissues ready, everyone. Because, oh my God, my heart's not ready. I do want to shout out everyone in the chat that's talking about the, what did I say? <laughs> the like most intense, oh crap, I missed it. Most memorable concert in the history of the world. Um, yes, I am the one who nerd says, um, Oh, interesting. Okay, having seen Metallica live, I feel like Eddie could have played with them at some point. Same vibe. LOL. I was cheering. I was singing along. I was headbanging. Truly, Eddie is a bar to break through the fourth wall and hit. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, a lot of like really cool things. Uh, Sprinkles says Master of the Puppets is an epic song. And I was like, Dustin in that moment. Yeah, I love seeing Dustin's face. Uh, just react to everything. My favorite metal band is Iron Maiden though. Oh, and which we so see cool. several times throughout Eddie's collection of t-shirts and tapes and just another weird little aside, the battle vest we see him wear with all the patches on it on the very back is a huge just giant beautiful patch and apparently that came from the estate of Ronnie James Dio. Like they gave it to the show to use specifically for Eddie, for this vest, for the season. And that just, that made me so happy. That's so nice. That's great. Um, oh, okay. So let's see. Um, Sprinkle says, that is a solid choice, Johnny. Cueball says, I'm a musician myself. I'm a drummer and guitar player. And I would pick Raining Blood by Slayer. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let's move on to another moment that this one's going to, we'll touch on this because, uh, we'll, yeah, let's, let's talk about this. So, uh, last week we geeked out about Nancy and Steve because y'all know how much I ship them. And I understand Jonathan is there not promoting cheating, but like, bye bye, Jonathan. Let me just have this just for me and anyone else that ships them really hard. Uh, but yes, yeah, Steve, officially comes out and says the Winnebago dream. Yeah. There was also someone else there. It's you. It would be with you, Nancy. Ah! Rob and Nancy and Steve start getting strangled. That whole thing happens, which is a lot. I want to know if y'all were as terrified as I was. Cause I was like, Oh my God, how many people are they going to kill? Like I don't no limits. I, I was thinking. And then of course, Nancy's gunshot scene near the end. Um, there was, I think also on Netflix's YouTube channel, Netflix the Geeked, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, Joe Keery and Maya Hawk, so Steve and Robin, uh, reacted to that scene, that last scene with Nancy doing the whole gunshot thing. And basically, they're just like their characters and they were very supportive of Natalia Dyer. So uh, if y'all haven't seen that, check that out, of course, after you're done watching our live show right now. So, Thoughts, feelings, emotions, questions, concerns, everything about the whole Winnebago dream thing with Nancy, Steve saying that, and then, you know, the whole getting strangled thing, and then Nancy's gunshot scene. And when I'm saying the gunshot scene, that's at Vecna near the end. Johnny, yes. I just have to say that, like, at being the guy who's actually done this, it, it puts it puts the, the listener in an awkward space, you know? Be like, hey, you know, just so you know, I have these feelings for you. Uh, so respond to them, you know. Um, and much like Jonathan or much like. Um, yeah, much like the whole like um, the whole Jonathan brother will thing, just like, you know, I like to be the kind of person who's like, hey, there's this on the table. I'm ready for whenever you're ready to react to it. Uh, but that doesn't make for conflict. It doesn't make for a good story. But, you know, Thanks. that's just me. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, thoughts? Um, like, I always knew it was about Nancy. We all knew it was about Nancy. Like, yeah. come on. I've already said <laughs> yeah. I've We that. knew. <laughs> Rob Jonathan, 
go back to Steve because he's grown and he's becoming a fantastic guy. Um, so that I ship forever and always, even whenever Stranger Things ends, I want those characters to go off into the distance together. <laughs> um, but uh, with the whole choking thing, that actually, I figured it would have taken one of them and they would have had to fight. I did not expect it to take all three of them and pin them to the wall. But I do also have to say that was a long time for them to get be getting choked against yeah. the wall because it was a long, long time. One of them had to have passed out or something. That was my only issue with that. I was like, this is quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah. I love Steve. I love that he finally acknowledged the fact that, yeah, he's been a dad to all of these kids for all this time. Like that, that was my favorite part of that whole Winnebago speech is talking about, yeah, I've had experience with all these kids, clearly. So I, I loved that whole thing. I love his journey of growing up, realizing what it is he truly wants, everything like that. I love what Robin has brought out in him, how she is, she, she really has, like she's helped balance him and helped him realize who he wants to be, I think, a little bit more. And that whole dynamic is really great. What I wish is there was a little more consistency in things like the vines and the time. And they they do a whole thing when they first enter the, the upside down about, well, you can't touch any of the vines because it's a hive mind, blah, blah, blah. And as we get closer to the climax of the episode, they're touching everything. Like <laughs> nobody cares anymore. And I'm just sitting there going, wait a minute. I thought the whole thing was you couldn't touch the vines. And now they're just, ah, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> What are the rules so we know? There are no rules out. in the upside down, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Sprinkle says, every time I see vines attacking, I think of evil dead. Um, it was yeah. very Raimi. Yep. I was going to say, I had I felt I had real Jumanji vibes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was just waiting for Robin Williams to be like, it's a stampede. <laughs> And Van, P oh, so that Nancy was doing her best Van Pelt with the shotgun, right? Like, if we're going yeah. with the Jumanji vibe, that's what it oh my is. Gosh. Also, by the way, if you ever go back but to Jumanji, just super tangent, the aunt is um, E.B. Newworth. E.B. Newworth, yeah. Yes. The yes. best. I just, I, I found Frasier later. This has nothing to do with, uh, <laughs> with uh, Strange Things, but the fact Frasier that I. Frasier is the best. The so, fact that I put her in Jumai, I was like, oh, wait, she was the hot aunt in Jumai. What, what? So hopefully this show, tying it back in, hopefully this show, these uh, <laughs> actors will have their Frasier and then they'll be like, oh, you know, they're on Stranger Things. I do have to say, you know, although you compare Nancy to Van Pelt, at least Nancy was able to hit her target. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will again. say the one other thing about that scene is everyone talking about the fact that, oh no, it's all three of them with the vines, right? There was an interview that Millie Bobby Brown did recently, and she talked about the fact that she feels that the Duffer brothers are not doing their job by killing enough characters. And I agree with that completely because it's, someone's gotta die to make it. And I hate that, that that's, what I feel I need out of this story right now, but to kind of raise the stakes and push the characters emotionally to the next level that I feel they need to get to with the story that we have right now. I feel that somebody else, one of the main characters one of the needs to die. One of the mm -hmm. originals needs to die. Yes. Okay, the everyone pick. Pick originals. Who would you kill? Everyone pick. Jonathan. <laughs> okay. Jonathan out. Bye, Jonathan. Jonathan's gone. Who else? Mike. I don't. Mike. Just uh, off of this season alone, I would pick Mike. Mike, yeah. Johnny. I, I'm gonna have to. At first, I was just like, I don't know. Whatever they want, I'm happy just to have a show. But I would say, yeah, Mike. I mean, I feel like um, Finn and Millie. Like it seemed, and I, this might be like a hot take here, but I think they've kind of like. They kind of checked out, you yeah. know. I feel like they're they know that their star power. Now, I mean, I don't know them personally, 
And this is just like being being um, an audience member who's just like, I think I see what's going on here. I, I, I know Hollywood. I think I know. But it's just like <laughs> they seem like they've outgrown the show to a degree. Yeah. Um, whereas Gaten and... Uh, if I was going for the biggest upset death that would Game of Thrones upend everything, it would it would be Dustin. I would kill they, Dustin. If they kill Dustin, if they kill Hopper, you know... They've um, already killed Hopper. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah don't so, re-kill him. What the heck? And Joyce just got her moment with him. No, 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 no. They have to, if they kill someone, they have to actually kill they someone. They have to kill instead one of them. They have to uh, kill Will, Mike, Lucas, or Dustin. And Those that's four, and it'll bring everything back up. And everything when, like, when uh, Vecna falls out of the window, when, you know, all this other stuff, when it comes to horror movie rules... <laughs> Not to be too like, you know, uh, my parents are gonna be so mad at me. But like, <laughs> when, it comes, when it comes right down to it, horror rules, if you don't, if you see a body, like Jedi, all that shit, like you gotta see the body burn. You gotta see whatever. And even then, like in superhero shit, like nobody ever dies. Nobody, um, no dead. That's so I, yeah. I watched the season with my 16 year old who watches lots of genre stuff with me. And we were both sitting there just like, chop off his head. Chop off. What are oh, you doing? Oh, God, for the head. The whole time. Because it's like, this isn't going to kill him. How no. is a Molotov cocktail going to kill this guy? It's it's not. Like, what? what where was the planning here, guys? In the words of Thanos, you should have gone for the head. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm the one who nerds, brings up a good point, uh, saying, well, what happens, you know, with season five? We have a large cast that can die off then. That finale is going to hurt so good. It's the final entry in a horror movie situation. Anything goes. <gasps> yeah, look, as long as you don't take any of my favorites, I guess I'll be fine. And I can't even tell you all my favorites because that would take forever. So they let's talk about one, one of my of favorites. Huh? They already took one of my favorites. I know. They need to stop introducing new characters I to kill them off to have that their death quota of the season. I don't. I'm sorry. I, I have hope that maybe they'll bring back Eddie in like a ghost form or something. I don't know. I have hope. Don't don't crush my dreams. But yeah, I'm sorry, <sighs> but like Eddie coming back is my number one prediction. I, I, I a thousand percent. I, I have my... I was just talking about this and do I think they'll bring him back somehow? Yes. Do I think it's likely to be a flashback of maybe him DMing the Hellfire Club? Yes. That's more what I can see happen than them doing a Ghostbusters afterlife thing where they have him show up and like do a force ghost, tell them what to do moment. Like, I hope that doesn't happen. I don't want that to happen. I don't think it'll be a force ghost. And I, and I, and if I think they would be playing it safe, if they do a like, Oh, remember when he said this spell worked and blah, 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 blah. But no, I think. There's a whole, there's this whole D and D thing that's going around the internet. Like the The resurrection. The resurrection. So that would be cool because he'd come back and save the day again, you know. But. I do have something. We'll get to this at the end with what we do know about next season. Because after watching that after show, I do have an inside scoop. Not because I personally know the Duffer Brothers yet. <laughs> but um, y'all might be slightly surprised. We'll see. So let's get into the next quick thing. Again, we're not going to go into the deaths yet because we're going to set aside some time and some tissues for that. But let's talk about Movie Friday, Lucas, Max. Max's combo with Vecna. You know, Vecna um, uh, gives very much that whole Freddy Krueger vibe, Eric, if you want to. Yeah. Um, where you don't know when Vecna's like there, you know, when you have that nightmare start, when you have that. And that totally got me. I don't know if it got y'all. You know, when Lucas starts talking to Max and he's like, why would you say, would you feel like that about me, blah, 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 blah. And then I do want to talk about that fight, Jason and, and Lucas um, fighting with Max on the side. Um, uh, 
yeah, word vomit, everything, anything, everyone in the chat, go ahead and talk about that as well. Again, movie Friday with the little drawings. It reminded me a little bit of Love Actually, you know, like, a bit, but this was so much better. No offense, Love Actually, but I think I've moved on. Um, and yeah, the whole conversation, thoughts, feelings, emotions, Matt, we'll start with you. I felt that the that moment of Lucas telling her these things was too telegraphed. Like it, it was really obvious as soon as he started talking, you knew where this was going. So <laughs> for me, it, it was too, it was too obvious. It was, and maybe that's just cause I was expecting something like that. I was expecting him to turn around and have Vecna's face and all of that. It, I, I wanted it to go up another notch, maybe one more example of that. Another thing that he said to her, another thing that she said that would make him say that if it was really Lucas, I wanted another of those moments to really make that moment punch. But it was a really intense scene. And I'm so glad that Lucas got this because he's, he kind of, dis- I don't want to say he disappeared this season because we did get a lot of story focused on him, but it was a different character building than we've seen previously. So I I really liked this entire sequence with him and the fight with Jason was just fabulous. And I very, I hate saying I enjoyed it because I don't want to see him get beat up, but it was great to see him have this hero moment. So I think I I, I have to, uh, the journey arc of Lucas this season is, I really enjoyed it because like I mentioned earlier in the series, like he's kind of not my favorite, but this, bringing that conversation with Max and how like caring and everything like that, even when like she, everything happens to her, she falls and he's like, Erica and screams and everything like that, which is so joyous to happen uh, to see that for him. And I'm like, this is the Lucas that I've missed that I haven't been really getting and the character arc and I see where it went. That's what I wanted from Mike. Yeah. I agree. Get it. What Lucas got was, he was given gold and he produced and I'm very proud of that actor for doing that unscripted moment number three is lucas saying erica help that was not scripted that was the actors coming up with it in the moment oh i mean no matter what size what size what age these kids are <laughs> that's fair no they're, you know, <laughs> in your pocket. they're um, all taller than me so i don't care there the thing is is that they're this show has given them, and whether we say or whether we believe that, like uh, Finn and uh, Millie have grown out of the show, they still like Gaten and the whole crew have really been able to 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 display their chops. Agree, and and they're given that, but then also at the same time, we're talking about like, oh, we wanted that for Jonathan, or we wanted that for Mike, or whatever. If everyone was doing all good and having these great moments, you gotta have that yeah. the sweet and the sour. You gotta it's have gotta the balance. You gotta have the balance. You gotta have people underperform so people look a lot better. You, you know, like there's no such thing. I mean, movies stories are so fucking hard to tell. You know, and to just get a movie done is insane. And so, if it if it's not per my whole thing is is that when a, if a movie's not fucking perfect, then that's fine. It's done. And they did it, you know? Um, And if it's done well, fan-fucking-tastic. But, you know, like, I'm a a beggars can't be choosers kind of deal, so the fact that they're even going to give us a five, I'm just like, all right, cool, the more the merrier, you know? Um, Okay, so I want to make our way to a little bit of, you know, a lighthearted moment that happens. Before we get to lighthearted, oh, I want to oh my gosh, yes, please tell us. <laughs> but, but you brought up the like Lucas and Jason fight and everything like that. Um, I've been like reading a lot and talking to friends and everything like that, and it's so trippy that Lucas and Erica are the only two fighting actual people. Mm-hmm. Like, they're fighting for their lives from actual people, and yeah. that in the real element. world, in the real world, they're fighting for their lives with actual people. And it just changes the dichotomy of like, we've been dealing with all the supernatural stuff, like 
mind flare, all of that. And this is just bringing it back to reality, being like, oh, this stuff does actually happen. Like, oh my God. And I'm culturally, curious. yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm caring for them even more. And culturally, yeah. too. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you top, tapped in on this just because it's like to have the, the sort of like, uh, what's it called the alpha male, the sort of Aryan looking kid pulling a gun on a young African American kid. It makes, a st- it makes a statement regardless of how you feel which way or the other about it and that's important to have in our stories and it's and it's a great thing that it is yes this is real world um and i could be on this soapbox of feeling how i feel about social justice and blah 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 but my favorite thing was when when erica kicks that kid in the nuts and i'm yes, like it was oh, so yeah. good. <laughs> max him with the flashlight yep dude yeah good oh, yeah. old like some some people deserve to get kicked in the nuts. And if I can kick some Nazis in the nuts or kick some bigots in the nuts, then... Yes. I, so- I would argue that her fight with that kid is more satisfying than Nancy with the shotgun. For yeah. me, anyway. Yeah, no, totally yeah. agree. Erica, I always, I've been calling her the little G this whole entire season. She's like... <laughs> She's so great. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> love Erica. Um, I hope she gets her duck hunt. <laughs> um okay so next we have a little bit of lightheartedness max sees l in the hawkins dance dimension she grabs her cheek and she's like just gra- it's so funny i loved how max just like let her guard down and just like was like wait what after like almost getting beth um and l says one of the best lines i think of the whole season i piggyback from a pizza dough freezer and then Max is like, what? Which is wonderful. And then, you know, Max gets Vecna. Again, we're not going to go into the death yet. So let's just talk about their their friendship and just that moment quickly before we go into another moment. And then we'll get into the deaths, everyone. <laughs> so who wants to go first? Well, oh. the, the homage to all of the great teen horror films in that whole sequence was great like the fact that it was you know very nightmare it pretty much and the fact that they had robert england show up you can't you can't argue with that but it's so carry in a way also that entire sequence with the snowball dance and i was just like i was yeah. waiting for the bucket to fall on her and the balloons exploding blood that was probably one of my favorite visuals the entire season it was a good good effect yeah. Um, I have to say, I, I enjoyed that thing. Just like that relief of Max seeing Eleven and being like, oh my God, somebody's here to help me. Uh, but I did find it very cute to go back a little bit when Elle first gets to where they're all skateboarding and you see baby Max. Because I don't know if any of you remember Rainbow Bright. She looked like a little Rainbow Bright doll with the clothes and everything just <laughs> skateboarded away. And I was like, it's Rainbow Bright. But... <laughs> um, that that moment of just relief for her with in in the snowball is great. It reminds me of like you said, prom night, Carrie, all of those just like classic horror, like the the eleven o'clock hour, like everything's about to go down. So yeah, I mean wholeheartedly. I mean the production team, like the writing, they're firing off at all cylinders, and they they as it happens, my. My, I don't say this out loud. I mean, I cheered for the nut for the nut kick, but I I don't do the talk to the screen thing. But in my brain, I was just like, I see what you're doing. Prop. <laughs> Credit what credits do. Red game recognize game, as the kids say. When they oh, do it. yes, <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah, sprinkles is saying my sister loved Rainbow Bright. Um, I'm glad that y'all noticed that. I don't. I'm not familiar with Rainbow Bright, but I'm so glad that we're having this conversation because that's exciting. I love when things just like line up. Um, so here I have this next one. It's it's a it's kind of a you know um, in your own opinion kind of question. So what or who caused things to go in a better direction? So near the end of the episode, everything is just going to crap. Um, Joyce. Uh, goes over and like kind of shocks the demo dog, dog? no demo gorgon not sure um dog Gork, whatever uh, that's like attacking hopper and then kind of roughly around the same time we also get l getting her powers back after having um you know enough getting strength from mike's 
conversation, little monologue thing. And then she's like, "Ah!" and then we also right after Joyce saves Hopper, we see them run and then they go into a cell and then Murray comes out with a flamethrower. Boom. Most of the Demogorgons are dead. Who ended up really? Oh, and then around that time, that's when Robin, Steve and Nancy just get released because the hive mind. So who is really the domino that kicked everything off? Would y'all say Joyce? Would y'all say, weirdly enough, Max because of L? Because, it, I mean, without without that happening, Murray wouldn't have been able to save Joyce and Hopper. Or maybe he would have later. But then what about Hopper? Thoughts? Who? And I am asking for one person. There is no wrong answer, of course. But who would y'all say really kicked that off? Max and L. I mean, like, honestly, the whole thing starts in the brain. That's, that's just my cup of tea. I forget how it's edited exactly or, like, how you see the, the sequence. The answer yeah. is in the edit. But in my brain and in my heart of hearts, like, it all begins with the psychosis. Like, if it, it was this character who has these mental powers, then it relays the chain reaction and the domino effect. I would, I would agree uh, that I, I feel that it's Max... This was kind of her season, all of four. So much of it was focused on her dealing with her internal darkness, for lack of a better term, and her guilt. I, I definitely think that it it was her that kind of set everything off. L? No, Max. Max? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I would probably say Joyce and Murray. I would go with them. Okay. Um, I love Murray, so... <laughs> And that sequence of uh, Hopper getting attacked and L on the wall and all of that going on, Joyce and Marie really came in as like the linchpin to be pulled to let's distract this mind so everybody else can do what they need to do, which was their main focus anyway, to be like, we're going to be the distraction that they need to continue their distractions and their game plan to successfully complete this. So I would MVP award for that moment goes to Joyce and Murray. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love that whole bye bye Demogorgon situation. Now the moment we've really been teasing and talking about here and there, the biggest tearjerker moments of the season. Before I'm sorry, um, before we, before we yes. get into tearjerker during that sequence of shit, the Conan sword is yeah. everything. Yeah. So like, it, it gets <sighs> teased previously where we see when the prisoners are given weapons to go fight the demigorgon we see the atlantean sword of conan's father and it was kind of like a throwaway easter egg and everyone was like that wasn't what i think it was right and then we find out it was it's the actual prop it is the real thing and i just i can't I can't get over how amazing that is. Like, what what life is David Harbour living right now? He got to be Hellboy, then he got to hold the sword. I just, so I, good. I do have to say that I did see an interview with David Harbour about that. And he was like, that sword was heavy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I love that. It's a good for him. You know, like, it makes yeah. me happy that Mr. Lily Allen gets to... Uh, <laughs> He gets to he gets to have fun, and that's the best. That's the thing about being an actor and telling stories is that like, do you do this moral? Do you do this moral thing? I must tell stories because that's what I was. It's fucking fun. It's fun to do this shit, and to, and for it to be your job, then you're lucky as shit. You yeah. know? Oh yeah. One now day. we're not so lucky because of what? I said one day for it to be my job. <laughs> Yes. Um, sad, sad day though, because we do have to talk about these deaths that really just ouch. Um, Eddie, you know, and uh, well, I do say deaths, but you know, not really, just one death. Um, and Max's coma situation. So let's talk about Eddie's first. Um, I have to say that one. Uh, when you think of all like collectively and this is obviously personalized for each single person we've all seen different shows let's just stick to shows um but when you think of death scenes in shows i think of fits and agents of shield <laughs> um and i can't think of any other ones but this one eddie's is right up there 
it's like one, if not second, it's probably first place because of the emotion and everything. And that hit hard. And I want to know just in the grand scheme of all the shows you've ever seen in your whole life, all the death scenes that you've ever seen, where does this one rank? Top 10, top five? Or is it like, no, like it was nice. It was good. But like, you know. Well, I mean, I feel like you have to have a, a scale, a known scale where like one is random person on CSI dies. 10 is Charlie from Lost, not Penny's boat. That That's well, for me kind of what it is. And so I would feel that Eddie, that scene with the character, with how important he was to the, the soul of this season, I would argue, is probably like a seven if we're going one to ten. I really, I hate saying I enjoyed a death scene, but I'm, I'm kind of that person who does enjoy those moments. Well, and so I, I, yeah, I, I really, I really liked that scene. As difficult as it was emotionally, it was a good scene. It needed to happen. Somebody had to die. Yeah. I, I would have to say that I had a lot, a lot of emotions uh, for this scene because like I said, like I, Eddie grew on me. I wasn't immediately a fan. Like again, bad kids wear Metallica shirts. Um, but as far as, as far as like scenes in other movies and other shows and stuff, one, when I lost my grandpa, big fish really got me. Oof. Big fish. And, and it really, really got me. I'm so glad that I'm amongst friends that I could just be like, okay, versus like, Gah. you know, yeah. if I was talking about this with a fiance, I'd be a mess. And I was a mess when Eddie, when, it, when, when Eddie passed. My next one would be a flip side, would be because, and again, after my, after my father figure passed away, Princess Bride, when Inigo stabs uh, the six-fingered man, it's the inverse. It's the death of, of something that, that drove you nuts, you know? And Mandy Patinkin said, like, I envisioned the cancer that killed my father. And it's just, and in, you, you, I want my father back, you son of a bitch. It's so, is so something that I felt. And if I have to say, like, one of my most recent number one go-tos, three words, by Grabthar's Hammer. Aww. That one. Yeah. That one super, super gets me. Poor because, because, you know, like, you know, it makes it real for, it makes it real for, um, for, uh, uh, for Alan, you know what I mean? Like, but, and I'm just, I don't mean to ramble, but he, the instant they started playing when it's cold, I like to die. Like we were watching the stuff that we watched squelchingly with, uh, subtitles, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you guys were talking about like in the previous episode, we were talking about songs that really uh, called to us in this one. And my fiance read Moby's When It's Cold, I Like to Die. And she goes, oh no. <laughs> because she knows how much that song means to me. And I, I said whatever I said in a previous episode, but that song is a very personal song that, that uh, has a lot of psychology with me, my own suicide ideation, and please seek help from your friends or just talk to someone or whatever. But like that always, always, always awakens like that. And, you know, like, you know, Mufasa and Simba running before we know what's going to happen. Like you, you know, your triggers in life and she knows that that's my song. And I was like, fuck, oh, that's, oh, oh. And I did, the, I did the, I did the, I'm not crying boyfriend. I'm the, I did the, I'm not crying spouse where I'm just like, I did the, I did the, oh, my eyes. Uh, and she, and like, not only that, she was like, she was doing like that couple thing where they lug, where they uh, leg hug you, where it's like, you're sitting like in their lap and you have them right there. And so, you know, the warmth of her. And I was just like, oh, good. and not that I was trying to be too macho or whatever, but like, she knows I'm crying. And like, if I give like, I don't want to be like, Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, I completely agree with you. Like, me and my boyfriend watched it together, and we were just in tears. One, uh, because he dies, but also Dustin's, like, 
lip quivering and just like how distraught he is which he brings back later when he's talking to his uncle and just like when he goes to go hand him the pick and everything like that that lip quivers again and i was like damn it dustin um (laughs) What I am impressed with, though, is that uh, Joseph Quinn did an interview, and those were filmed on two different days. So yep. his death was filmed live on location because they were running on out of light. Then they took dust into the sound stage and everything, and that's when they filmed his reaction. So it was actually two different shots in two different places on two different days, and they got that. So that is just beautiful acting and beautiful connection. That's that's the and I have to say, like that's exactly where. Gaten, where Dustin does so good. I mean, mm-hmm. we have made, here's the thing, we've made such a to-do, and no offense, not to be like the nerd who's like, don't, like, oh, pretty people, whatever, but like, we have made celebrities out of Finn Wolfhard, we made celebrities out of, out of Millie, and all this other stuff, but god damn, does that Gaten kid know how to fucking sell. I mean, to be fair, he was someone before any of the rest of them were he was on broadway before the rest of them so that him, him and uh sadie were both yeah, on they, they were caleb. so she was in annie and dustin was in les mis on broadway both of them caleb was and, in lion king oh yeah that's true yes caleb was also in lion king all around the same time i want to say yeah. and so it it's unfair in a way to put Finn and Millie above them where they didn't really have that same experience that these others had. I I just watched I, Tanya the other, like last night. And it's, if she brings up or Margot does a really good job uh, with the line, uh, they abused me, but you also abused me. And that is super, super important as we, as people that create, I mean, when Mike's dad is watching TV and he says, Oh, the tabloids, the TVs are no different tablets. And then we look at our new cycle. We're like, Oh my God. But like, it's, it's true. Like there's so much to be said in the, you know, movies are a metaphor for life and blah, 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 blah. But like, but yeah, they, the kids, what's brilliant about them as actors, I think that they come from theater. They, where you have to play to the back of the audience, right? They, you, they have, they have to be broad. However, when it comes to right here, even on separate days, when it comes to the cameras right here, you know, and you're just giving it, that's great. When you can connect and you can like, it's, it's in the little flicker, the, like you're saying, the lip quiver, like that is really, really great. Cause they know that the act, they know that like, even as kids, kid actors, they know that like, how do you express that with your face, with your words and all that kind of stuff. And they're just kids and they're so great at their job. And that leads us to the next person that, you know, ends up in a coma, Max and Lucas. That gutted me. Oh my God. The moment that Max starts saying like, oh my gosh, I can't feel my body. I'm not ready. I don't want to die. And then she can't see anything. Y'all, like, I give this woman an Oscar. Like, I know that's not how it works, um, (laughs) but my God, wow, wow. Thoughts, feelings, everyone, just as we wrap up the biggest tearjerker moments of the season potentially. i'm mad they didn't let her die because it's like that whole scene goes to waste that's not to take away from the brilliant performances in it but i'm kind of mad that they they brought her back i love sadie don't get me wrong i want to see her in everything but i just felt like that is a disservice to the character and to lucas having to deal with that um, I, completely, I completely agree with you on that one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm right back there with saying I think more of the main cast should have died, even though she's still a newer cast member than the old, uh, the old ones. Uh, I feel like she should have passed away. But then that brings back to be like, why, why are they going to use her for for next season? Mm-hmm. Um, I do have to say the other death that I appreciated was a football player getting cut in half when the earthquake happened. <laughs> like, yeah. I literally, so so in my notes, I wrote Hawkins splits bye bye Jason. Yes. I, yeah. What Where, does it I, say? It just mine. It just says Jason fries. Oh, it was so beautiful. <laughs> like, and it, they don't even give him like that much time to see him die it's just like a but you see it so it's just it's so yeah enjoyable. 
Yeah, people in the chat were like, wait, 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 wait. I had to go back. The man of I says, I had to go back and rewatch that to confirm I'd actually seen it and heard it right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There was a whole thing for like three days where people were not sure if he actually died. Oh, <laughs> it was yeah. hilarious. Body dead, right? Cut in half for sure. For sure. So let's start wrapping up the season, y'all. So we get, you know, the two days later situation, which I want to also hear what y'all thought about that. Did you feel like it was a cop out or was it like, no, it's fine. So um, what I really loved near the beginning of the, you know, after two days later is Elle and Mike ask uh, Dustin, you know, like, where is everyone, blah, blah, blah. And Dustin does such a great job with this line of like, oh, you don't know. Like the way he, ugh, it's like chills. <laughs> and um, yeah, we come to realize this is like a brief breakdown. So just pick whatever you'd like to talk about. But Elle basically restarted Max's heart. That's pretty cool. Robin's okay. moment um, with Vicky making the sandwiches, the PB&J sandwich, Peter Pan, peanut butter showed up. We got Jif earlier in the season. Now we got Peter Pan. Um, we did have Eddie's uncle show up and then we have that moment with Dustin and then I'll ask y'all a final question before we go into what we're left. So thoughts about any of that, pick your favorite moments, whatever you would like to talk about. Um, right out the gate, just the idea that like when Gaten just says, when, when Dustin just straight up goes, you know, I was there, I know what he did and blah, 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 blah. And the fact that like, just that whole sequence, the, like I that's my second cry. But again, um, that lip quiver got me again. <laughs> it, I mean, it really is. I mean, I really hope that I really hope that past Stranger Things, oh. as these kids' careers evolve, I'm really interested in seeing where where his goes because he really does. He really he really flow. I mean, I have I have to get every Dustin hat. I have to have every dust in hell <laughs> because just like, I mean, I don't know. The kid does so great. I agree. He was wonderful in this season. And I kind of wish we would have had a moment where he got to see Susie. Oh, like, yeah. To see them oh, my God. Together. Yes. That would have been great. But yeah. how weird was that family? <laughs> just the, ra- the random Royal Tenenbaums. Oh, that- yeah. That family was weird. <laughs> um, uh, Robin's oh. moment with her, her object of her desire was wonderful. And I'm really hoping that something develops for her because she deserves someone. Yeah, she really does. Um, I have to say like two days later, uh, I was a little mad that Nancy and Steve and Dustin and all of them weren't or well Dustin was but like the rest of them weren't mourning Eddie a little bit more like what? he just died did you leave his body in the upside down like <laughs> Matthew, you've been through this before with <laughs> Bob, it's what he would have right? wanted <laughs> but it's like I I it, it moved on a little bit too quick for me like I get I mean, it, I, the Nancy thing. Like even if it was like a month later or a couple of weeks later, I could have understood. But two days later, I don't think it was enough time for everything they just experienced. He's coming back. He's coming back is why. Uh, but uh, that moment where they get out of the fan and the van and they all see each other and everything, mm-hmm. and go and hug. Even like I appreciate Mike's mom running over to him and be like, "You're never going on vacation again." But <laughs> why are they still there? Like we've established that the town is fucked and that oh. everyone is leaving in droves. So why are they, that family, Mike's family, why are they still there? Why? Is it a, like, is it an economic thing? Like they could, they're white in the eighties. Like <laughs> the <is>. economy, <laughs> they could just go anywhere. Like, I mean, I don't know, Indiana, like, <laughs> um, you know, uh, we literally economic- see the whole town leaving. Why are they still there? Everything we know about his parents tells us that they would not stay. They would leave at the first possible opportunity. So why? I mean, I mean, to to say that they would have left when 
uh, Will disappeared and Barb disappeared. They would have left when the mall got destroyed. Oh, yeah. No, but that, those are all things that didn't happen to them. The town literally exploding and having these fault lines open, that happens to them. That affects them. Like mom can't drive her car to her hair salon. Dad probably can't get to work because the roads are now no longer there. So why do they stay when finally they're kind of faced with this reality that something drastic has happened? Well, I would also say... Like whenever, and and I'm sorry to cut you off, man, but like the framing of a national tragedy, like when I was a kid, it was Oklahoma, you know, Mm 9-11, why don't you just leave? You know, it's, it's not as simple, but when it comes to stories, when it comes to character development, things like that, you go, huh, why don't they do that? You know, um, I am the one who nerds in the chat says, this is our town mentality. I'm calling it. So, mm-hmm. which really braces us for, you know, that final shot that we get uh, when they're all, <laughs> did anyone notice everyone was just like stepping towards the camera and they were all like breathing really heavily. And I was like, yeah. okay, now like we know this is like your, your hero moment. So here's where we're left. Okay. At the end, one is still very much alive. Um, we don't know where he is or what shape he is, uh, but Will feels him. There's that whole like, ooh, this one must die point. or one can't, one must die while the other one lives whole situation. Particles are officially falling from the sky in Hawkins. Um, everyone, the, uh, the main group of people is back in Hawkins. Flowers are officially dying. dying. Max is in a coma and yes, bye bye Jason. Um, along with everyone else. So here's what we do know about season five. According to the Duffer Brothers, according to the after show on Netflix Geeked on YouTube. So the storyline and character development that we had with Max this whole season was very much dependent on what happened last season with Billy. They said that Dustin's going to have a similar situation happen because of Eddie. Which is why I'm thinking they wouldn't bring Eddie back because they they've already teased this. But again, they're allowed to change their minds and maybe they were just screwing with us. But they did very much tease that, which I'm like, oh, good. Then Dustin gets all this really, really juicy stuff to work with. And then they also said that they're going to kind of like throw it back to how season one was, which was everyone joining together to fight this thing, which makes so much sense for the finale which also makes sense for a lot of people that we love and hold dearly to die. So questions, hopes for next season. I know I have some questions. Where's Argyle at the end of this? I need to know where he is, where Susie, right? They are also, another thing that we do know is that they will do a time jump, uh, which we already knew, but just as a reminder, um, Nom Talk Network says, hashtag metal zombie Eddie which I'm oh, He's um, literally going to become oh, Eddie. He's literally going to become <laughs> Eddie. Yeah. I am the one who nerds says, I'm still ho- holding out hope for Metal Zombie Eddie. Love that. Yes. Okay, well, hey, if that happens, I'm the one who nerds. You called it. So, thoughts, questions. Again, Argyle, what the heck? Where And and Murray, where's Murray? Did Murray come back? So or did Murray not? Murray... Murray totally came back and he opened his own dojo, right? And I feel like Argyle has opened his own branch of Surfer Boy Pizza in Hawkins, even though everything is like, because obviously we know when he is faced with a crisis, what does he do? He makes pizza for all of his friends. So why would he not do that? Yeah, I would say that Murray's enjoying a slice, you know? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they're all like everybody who's off i would love if there was more like you know we have special features we have content creators we have all these deleted scenes and all that kind of shit i would love a more like uh what is it they did for um thor ragnarok with daryl like i wish they would do more of that just with media in general i would love to see a scene where like the town's being ripped apart or they're going to go save the rescue. And then Murray and, and everybody who like doesn't have a scene, they're just like having a piece of like, wow, this is happening. And that's it. Like I, you know, TikTok exists. Give me that biteable, small bit of, of comedy. Um, but yeah, I mean, like people need to eat during a, during a crisis, 
you know, like they're making peanut butter sandwiches. Yep. You know, what's better than a peanut butter sandwich is like the best pineapple pizza. pizza. Yeah. Pineapple uh, pizza. I think uh, Argyle maybe went back to California because his boss called and was like, hey, where's my van? <laughs> like uh, you were supposed to you've missed a shift already like where is it uh so maybe he went back there murray murray's a leaf on the wind so you know him he's gonna do the conspiracy things he's probably looking into the person who called on the phone when they were in russia just to make sure um but next season i just hope like i hope the group gets back to that season one tightness that they were I've already heard that it's going to be a lot about Will this season, uh, this last season as well, and his whole Good. thing will loop back to him book, and book the line player connection. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard a lot of rumors about, like, is he still a spy? Like, why is he still connected? All of that, because wasn't it taken out of him? So we'll see what happens to that. And yet again, I do have to say before I stop talking, I hope Jonathan dies still. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Um, Sprinkles is saying Murray and Argyle go on a road trip. I'm the one who nerd says I've watched a road trip mini series like that. Look, I'm down for anything Argyle wants to do. Let's go. Yeah. If you guys, if you guys also find him on social media, I forget what his his tag is, but he's just some California Los Angeles nerd who has like nothing but like uh, toy photography. And he has like a full Batman suit, like this this kid, man. Like I I gotta I gotta give him a high five or whatever he wants. You know what I mean? Like that I kid, that, he's my cousin. I I do have to say, could you imagine Argyle in Utah with Eden? That whole series. Oh like, my yes. god! I yes. just, oh, them taking Eden, care of those yes. kids. Come on. <laughs> um. Let's see. I want to make sure. I think his name is Eduardo Franco. Um, in real life. Yeah, that Maybe kid. Not. I mean, yeah, him and and Molly Ringwald, like straight up, <laughs> like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dumb, you're right. Our dog, Eduardo Franco. Dumb, like D U M B U A R D O. That's yeah. That's his Instagram. Wow, that's fun. Zumbardo. Zumbardo. Yeah. <laughs> and also watch Booksmart if you haven't, because he's amazing. Booksmart is so good. It's so good. Amazing. It is so I gotta, good. I got to rewatch it. I can't it. wait for Madam Web. Mm. I'm excited for that, too. Um, all right, y'all. Is there anything you would like to add about this whole season? anything at all as we wrap up i can't believe we did it this whole season was like so many hours long they're they're not looking at making it longer than this season so we have a lot on their plate plates i feel that the end credit song was stronger than kate bush's running up that hill Ooh. that is because i am not a huge kate bush fan Not to take anything away from her, her contributions, the people that love her. She's just not for me. Susie, on the other hand, is. And so for me, adding Spellbound to the season ender credits was like, why was this not the song that Max was obsessed with? Damn it. Anyone else? Uh, uh, I just, this this season was a long whirlwind of guess who done it pretty much or like <laughs> what's going to happen why are we doing this like more than any other season that i i film uh the dungeons and dragons part of it that every every season i'm excited to see where it goes next season what they can bring in from that genre and that uh, variety of people who love doing that. I've always wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons. Never learned because people were like, "No, you absolutely should." Now is the time. Oh yes, but I, and I'm going to my boyfriend place. So, Yay! <laughs> uh, Good. but uh, I want I want to see how they incorporate that more into this next season and how epic because it's the final showdown. It's going to be epic, and I can't wait to come back next year and be like, "Okay, let's talk about it." <laughs> yeah. That, so, that actually just made me think that maybe this next season we're going to get a mimic 
because we've had a mind flayer, we've had demigorgons, oh. we've had all of these, uh, we've had a Vecna. What about a mimic? We need a mimic. Um, what's it called? I would I would have to say in wrapping for the series, my uh, old man vibes are <laughs> so long. So these episodes are there. If you could, if you could just break them up into eighteen episodes and not have it be like a two-hour episode, like. It's, I'm watching fucking Lord of the Goddamn Rings over here. You know, it's 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 worth it. I'll watch it, but I like the break. And one of the things I like about my my all time favorite series, Daredevil, and all of the Netflix, uh, all those Netflix shows, is that they do the serialize very well. They keep me on the edge of my seat, and I love that. And I love being able, like, in the moment, to do one more. I love the feeling of one more episode, one more episode, one more episode versus. Oh my God, when is this over? Fuck. You know what I mean? Like, that's just <laughs> that's just my feeling on that. Um, and I'm gonna make a nom talk pitch right now. Cause I'm Johnny, I'm like my producer brain. So I was like, oh, here's what you can do, here's what you do. If you guys do a live stream Dungeons and Dragons on Nom Talk, call me. <laughs> call me. I can't commit anything more. Then uh, I can't be a dun I can't be a dungeon master. It's just not in my nature as a human being. I can't pull it off. Um, and if it's if it's more uh, it's less math and more acting, I'm I'm there. Call me for the Dungeons and Dragons uh, Nom Talk series. Um, but lastly, in wrapping for the rest of the series, I want to. I know this might be the end. Might not be the end. I want to thank Amy and Stephanie and Eric and making new friends with Mab. Um, this has been a really, re I don't mean to wrap up the stuff on any toes. Uh, no, we are wrapping up. But, but yeah, Amy, <laughs> like you are such a pro. I see you with A-listers on your website. You should be on the right. And you're perfect for camera too. Your camera person can be up here and then you are just ask, asking the actor down here. And so you got that shot. And then, you know, you see the, you see Dwayne the Rock Johnson be like, hello, little person, you know, yeah. like. It, you know, you're you're fantastic. You keep my rambling and, you know, everybody kind of on track. Hands down, great job. Happy birthday, Stephanie. You guys have made this so, so delightful. Um, don't stop. Don't stop believing that you can call Johnny for any reasons. Where can people find you? Uh, you a lot of places. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on my YouTube. My website is paisanopictures.com. My TikTok is uh, John or Johnny Briantes 83. Like, just just find me. The Paisano guy is me personally. You Google me, and if it's not this old gray dude, then it's some dude in the Philippines or some some Italian kid. I, you know. <laughs> Eric, what about you? You Where can find. You you can find me at Heartless7 on all the socials, on uh, gaming platforms, Twitch, everything like that. But again, I had so much fun doing this series with you, Amy, and Johnny, and pleasure meeting you, Mab. Um, it, it, was, it was so much fun. I appreciate you guys having me, and happy birthday, Stephanie. <laughs> Mab. Uh, I am editor-in-chief for nerdbot.com, so that's kind of the best place to find me. That That's... It, that's what I do all the time. And Steph, I love you. Happy birthday. Thank you for having me on. I love doing these. Yay, we did it y'all. Thank you so much for the kind words here and here in chat. Thank you all for joining us for our season finale of Stranger Things season four. We laughed, we teared up, we talked about really important things throughout the season. Um, and of course, y'all are welcome to watch these all over again. You can watch the whole series again and watch our conversations about it all over again. We won't judge you at all. You can watch them on YouTube. Um, you can also listen to the show on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or where you can get your podcasts. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook. Go ahead and like us there. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. And then, of course, follow us right here on Twitch as you're watching us live right now. It's just right there if you haven't already hit 
the little heart button. I still don't know where it is, but it's one of those spots. All of our platforms are at Nom Talk Network. Thank you all so much. Oh, of course, be sure, be sure to join our Discord to keep the conversation going. And of course, just keep in touch with us, y'all. We love to geek out. Obviously, we talked about Stranger Things for several weeks now. Thank you for being amazing. Thank y'all for being amazing. It was an honor being here. Y'all can find me on all social media at Amy Cassandra MTZ. That is an abbreviation for Martinez. Well, that's it. I was gonna say until then, but I don't know when then is. So thank y'all so much. <laughs> Next time, yes. Have a nomorific night. Good night, y'all. Bye.